Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another video. Now these videos have become kind of a tradition for the channel when it comes to the end of the expansion reviews. Now if you've watched my Shadowlands review you'd see that there's been a massive gap when it comes to content and that's because unfortunately I kind of fell out out of love with WoW after the I'm gonna say shitstorm of Shadowlands. I came back to Dragonflight and for the most part it's been okay but we're going to talk through some kind of chapters on topics about this expansion and actually is it as good as people say it is and did it really bring wow back or is that something for the future so first off the story now the story in shadowlands was appalling i didn't really follow it i didn't think it was interesting the whole sylvanas thing i think it was very boring and it, it didn't feel like wow it felt like We'd gone into outer space and it was it was very different. I mean, ironically, in Legion, we did actually go to outer space and that seemed more realistic than Shadowlands did. The story for Dragonflight was really interesting. Bear in mind, we hadn't really seen the dra dragon aspects since Cataclysm. It was good to kind of re-see those characters, re-see the flights, go back to the Dragon Isles, which we've heard so much about for, so, for such a long period of time. I felt like the continuity of the story was quite good when it came to the leveling process and then when it moved on to the other patches it just kind of seemed really rushed i was expecting kind of a little bit more from it i think the emerald dream stuff at the end was interesting and it was the kind of the contrast to ardenworld that we'd seen last time but for me i think and to a lot of people actually i think that it became very disney and it was all about family and i think at another time i'm going to speak about kind of the story processes of wow and how it's changed over the years and how it's a little bit more family friendly now but it didn't seem like warcraft hands down farak was an amazing character absolutely love farak i think the fact that he was so brutal and that he didn't care was interesting and actually when we look at the story from a foreshadowing point of view i kind of feel like it's really opened up avenues for the story going forward, which is why I'm so excited about so, so excited about it. I think character development could have been kind of developed a little bit more. I think the story around Alex Draza, um, Nosdormu, Kalagos, it, it didn't really seem like we learned much about them. Now, I have got a book which was released during this expansion, and that definitely does go into more detail about Alex Draza. However, it was my understanding that we were told that the story wouldn't just be told through the books or the in-depth story wouldn't be told in just the books because if you don't have the books you miss out on half the story that happened with sylvanas it happened with shadows rising for shadowlands and it happened with before the storm for battle for azeroth that was really key information for the story going forward yet it wasn't described to people who just played the games and if you just play the games but you want to know about the story i don't think that does it justice story overall was so much better than the Shadowlands. But the question I have for myself is, that's not much to live up to. The key point when it came to storytelling in Dragonflight is the, sh is the foreshadowing. Knowing what's going into the future, what stories have been kind of laid for the World Soul Saga, I think it's really interesting. And that's the thing that's got me really excited about the new expansion. Moving on to the next section, raids and dungeons. Now, dungeons, I actually feel like they did pretty well. I think we had some really good dungeons I think one of my favourites is Brackenhide Hollow. I liked the openness, the space, the bosses, the roots as well when doing Mythic Plus, which is something that I focused on this expansion. I also liked going back to Alderman and the Legacy of Tear, seeing that dungeon kind of remastered. It kind of opens up the question of how many what other dungeons are there that could be remastered. So dungeons for me were a massive win. However, raids. So we had three raids like we did in Shadowlands. And I felt like I was in the same raid every single time. I know that it was a dragon themed expansion and there should be dragons. However, in every single one, there was a massive amount of fire. There was a massive amount of earth. The bosses were practically the same. Don't get me wrong, they were really difficult. And there are some really good bosses in there. Um, Sarkareth, I think, was a really, really good boss. Brack was an interesting boss when it came to end bosses. 
Razageth was good, but actually I think out of all of them was probably the hardest, unless you take the last phase of Farak where you have to deal with all the fire. Um, positioning on, on, on Razageth was something that was, I don't know, I think, especially for pug groups, it just didn't work it, at all. Because uh, people people don't learn about what they want to do. And that goes back to a video that I did a couple of years ago with the golden ticket where people get ahead of the curve. They don't actually know what they're doing because they've bought that. And then your group falls apart and you've spent hours in there farming for, for whatever you're farming for. Aesthetically, the raids were, were pretty dull. I, I think raiding a castle Nathria was probably the last good raid. Um, when I think of amazing raids, I mean... The BFA raids, I think, were were unbelievable. Um, one of one of my favourite raids of, of all time is probably um, Battle for Tazara Law. I think I've mentioned it before. And then going back to, to the Legion raids. Um, so raids are something which I think need a little bit of work, and I think there needs to there needs to be a little bit more dynamics. And I think that could have been done in Shadowlands, but in 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 Dragonflight, I think I think that was missed. And realistically, the only the only raid that involved the aspects directly would was the vault of the incarnates and only Caligos turned up. I think I think Aberus was an interesting one, especially with the story development of like Ebonhorn um and Rathian. I think I think that was that was interesting and I enjoyed that one. It kind of pushed the story a little bit further. But yeah, raids probably are a, are a downgrade for me for this expansion. Going on to systems, um the systems had a massive overhaul, especially with like talents. Uh talents I think were really good because it allowed you to Kind of more customize your character the way that you wanted to play it yes there's always going to be that mid maxing but it gave you more viable options of you making a little bit of a difference other systems like the flight stones and upgrading your gear i think that was really good as well it gave other people other options to be able to upgrade their gear without feeling like they had to do it every single week and and the, the vault wouldn't give them the gear that they wanted which i think going into the war within taking pvp out of the 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 gear from the vault as well and allowing you just giving you more honor i think will allow people to feel a little bit more on a tuesday when the reset happens for me on the american servers is wow i can actually get something that i want rather than oh my god it's been three weeks and i'm not getting the thing that i want unless i get those th those three slots which means i'm grinding forever for me um i think this leads into kind of pvp as well is i've really enjoyed pvp this expansion i think it's the thing that i've mained it's something that i've never really explored I dabbled a bit in Shadowlands, but but for Dragonfly, I really, really, I, I really stuck at it. Um, solo shuffle for healers was amazing. Being able to cap your vault in two games, I think, is a game changer. It, it solo shuffle is kind of crappy for for DPS because you're in a queue for twenty minutes and then someone can leave and then you're in a queue again. But for healers, sixty seconds and you're in. I've been able to gear so many different healers to have that difference and that ver that variety of gameplay. So whatever the, the team needed, I, I could kind of be there and, and have that because I was able to level my my different healers. The Battle Blitz, I think, is interesting. It's an interesting concept in concept going forward. Um, the fact that they're going to make it rated as well, which allows you to pair. The whole cross-faction thing throughout the expansion, being able to PvP is really good, which I'll kind of come back to at the very end because there's an improvement and something that I want to see for the future. And I'm really excited for the, it's made me really excited for the new battleground coming out in, in the War Within. So yeah, PvP is has is, is been a good thing for this expansion as well. Um, even the open world combat and, and the sparks I think were quite fun. And that leads me on to, to where, where all this content happened, the zones. The zones I think were really, really good. I think my favourite zone is probably, oh, I don't know. Obviously, I like the Emerald Dream, but when the original zones, I think the Azure Span was probably my favourite of how big it was and how dynamic. It was great seeing the Tuscar again. The artwork, oh my god, Blizzard artwork team. I mean, you never get it wrong, from my opinion. I think the stuff that you guys bring out is unbelievable and it makes me want to collect more and more and more. And when we're talking about zones and the story within those zones, it's, I think, the biggest thing for Dragonflight. And I think it's the thing that they're taking forward is dragon riding. It, it's changed the game. Dragon riding has been so fun that I will actually spend like hours just flying around the city, weaving and dipping around around bridges and hills, and it's it's just been so much fun to have that dynamic travel. And now the fact that they're bringing it in so you can change back to I think it's called like I think they call it Burning Crusade flying or stable flying. It gives you that for viability because don't get me wrong, there are times where I want to normally fly, hit. Um, numlock 
and watch a YouTube video and fly somewhere, and that's going to take time. But being able to dynamic fly, especially in the old world, I thought it would make the old world seem a lot smaller. And it, it does make it feel a little bit more condensed because you are moving so fast. But it doesn't make you make it feel as small as I thought it was going to be. I thought you're going to be able to kind of soar twice and then you're through a zone. Yeah, I think you can in some points, but actually the majority of the zones it works. Dragon flying was stolen from Guild Wars and it was a good steal. It, it, it was good. And the fact that they've taken that forward and also apply that to old mounts as well, which have made them more viable, I think is an interesting concept as well. So going forward, one of the things that I want to I want them to take from from the expansion is that they've done really well. And I think coming back from Shadowlands is was going to be really hard. And do I think that they made it all the way? No, um, I think the story wasn't 100%. It still didn't feel like Warcraft, even though it was a little bit more Warcrafty. And I, and I hear so many people say this, and I see it on Twitter or X, and, and, and I see people talk about it, and it's true. Where is the war in Warcraft? And I think we got that slightly at the end of Dragonflight when we were fighting for Rack. But there's no war. And I think maybe it's something that I need to talk about in a little bit more detail another time, but now we don't have the faction fighting against each other, that element of war has been taken out, but that needs to be replaced by something, because what are we fighting? And I think that's the interesting thing, and I might I might do a video about that separately, because I think that's an interesting in, interesting topic. I understand why they've gone down that route, but they need to replace it with something. But on that on, on that issue, the cross-faction and, and cross-faction activities are really, really important, because I think that strengthens your player base, and where you have different friends who may play on the Alliance or play on the Horde, well, actually, you want to play with those friends sometimes, and you can't. Now, the fact that they've taken the step and made that into pre-made groups, absolutely amazing. But I feel like you need to make some cube content cross-faction as well. Things like Epic Battlegrounds, for example. I love PvPing with, with one of my friends. Uh, we do random battlegrounds and random epics just literally for fun but we can't do those unless we're on the same faction because you don't have the queuing and now they've brought the cross-faction guilds in it makes it so you can't do queued content with your guild mates and that kind of feels like they've taken one one barrier down but then they've put another barrier up so you can't you can't play with them so i think that's something that going going forward to the future that they could do better so summarizing everything dragonflight was it good i'm gonna say yes um i think just because of the fact that the story has opened up different stories for the future, I think some of the systems that have allowed you to customise your character a little bit more, I think the zones and the artwork is always going to be at the top, but I think it has brought WoW. Now the question is, has it, has it saved it? I think the best analogy that I can come up with is you've cut your finger, it's bleeding, Dragonflight hasn't healed that, but it's definitely put a bandage on it, or a band-aid on it. It's stopped the bleeding. Now the real question is, what happens with the war within? Where does that take us? Because I do have some concerns for the war within, but it's made me fall back in love with WoW again. And the fact that I've actually sat down and wanted to make this video of talking about my experience of Dragonflight is a sign for me that I'm enjoying myself again. Because if I didn't want to make this video, then I, it means that I'm not enjoying WoW and I don't want to talk about it. But the fact that I want to do that means I am enjoying it. So I'm really looking forward to the war within and Dragonflight is now over with the Fury Patch, in my eyes. Even my Hearthstones are set back to Ogrim, are ready for the new zone. There's going to be probably lots of content coming out from me when it comes to War Within. Probably like a, a quick dash, especially within the pre-patch. I want to try and share a couple of my views and where I think Warcraft is going and, and, and how that's affecting the way that I play and the style that I play. And also I think one of the best videos that I made on the channel was choosing my main for I think it was I think it was the battle for Desire Law, which was what, 8.2? Uh, no, 8.1, 8.1, I, I, I chose my main. The question is, what am I going to be choosing this time? And that will be in a video coming up very soon. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in that video soon.